What's up guys, it is Chris back with another news video and today we are talking about news from IkePod, the revived IkePod brand and a new dive watch, the C-Pod. Before I get into it, please don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that bell icon, it is super helpful for the channel and I very much appreciate it. So Mark Newson was the person who actually started IkePod way back when. That brand went out of business and the intellectual property and the name IkePod was actually purchased and the brand was restarted. They started out with some quartz models. They looked really good. Uh, and then they started coming out with some automatic versions as well. Uh, those were all powered by Miyota 9 series or 9000 series movements. Today we have the C-Pod, which is sort of loosely based on the original IkePod diver, the C-Slug. Uh, designed by Mark Newson. However, this watch has been redesigned. It is a somewhat of an original design from the brand. Fabrice Gannett is the person who actually designed this watch. He is a famous designer. He's designed some pretty incredible watches for MBNF and a few others. Uh, really an incredible designer. So the design on this is actually really, really good. It is a dive watch, so you're getting a rotating bezel. It is a unidirectional rotating bezel. It's loomed, which is pretty awesome. They're putting Luminova on the hour minute hands. Uh, you're also getting it on that bezel, as I mentioned, and of course the indices. So they're putting a pretty good amount of loom on here. You're getting a Miyota 9039. You're getting a screwed in case back, screwed in crown, 200 meters of water resistance. It's a 46 millimeter case, which I think a lot of people are familiar with. iPod will understand that 46 millimeter case doesn't really wear like a 46 millimeter. It sort of wears like a 43 millimeter. It's the design of the case actually because it is lugless design and the strap actually fits underneath the case. So the lug to lug on here is 46 millimeters as well. So it doesn't wear like that 46 millimeters. Also, it is a very curved case, so it does sit very nicely on your wrist. These are very good looking watches and the designs on them are very, very good. Obviously, they're borrowing heavily from their original designs uh, and then sort of redesigning this for a modern dive watch. It does get a Miyota 9039. You're getting sapphire glass. It's 46 millimeters with 200 meters of water resistance. So you're getting Luminova. They're not looming the second hand for one reason or another. That would be really helpful for people who actually want to use this for diving so that you could see the watch is actually moving. Um, I'm not sure why they wouldn't loom the second hand. I think that would make a lot of sense for them to go back and revisit. However, uh, they are coming out with three versions. There's a black with orange accents, a blue dial, and then an all black version. So that will be a PVD coated case and bezel in black. These are very expensive. They are limiting the first 50. Uh, those will be a limited edition run, but the uh, they will then go into a regular production run. So they're just numbering the first 50 of each one of these watches. So basically not really a limited edition, just a numbered run of the first 50. And then they go into regular production with these watches. They are asking $1,650 for those non PVD coded versions and then $1,750 for the PVD coded versions. I think that is a lot of money. Uh, for a watch that has a Miyota 9039 in it. Any Miyota 9000 series watch uh, should be well under $1,000 in my opinion. If they get near to $1,000, there should be a reason. There should be a lot that's going into this watch. There is a lot that's going into this watch. The design is pretty excellent, I have to say. However, at $1,000, I think this works. $1,650, I think, is a lot of money for a watch with a 9039. I recently did a video about Chrono Tokyo. I said the exact same thing and I will say it again. I think that watches that are using the Miyota 9039 should be under $1,000. Those movements are not expensive. If you're using something like a Salida movement, uh, an SW300, I could definitely see this price. It would make a lot more sense. Uh, an ETA 2892, that definitely makes a lot more sense to me because those are higher grade movements. Uh, they're a lot better to look at. I think it's a great movement. I just think it's not an expensive movement. And for what they're charging, it really doesn't make sense, especially that PVD coated version for an extra hundred bucks. You're talking about almost a $2,000 watch. That's a lot of money. 
Uh, but anyway, tell me what you guys think in the comments below. I think these look awesome. I think the design is incredible. I think the price is ridiculous, but I definitely understand it. They do put a lot of money into the design, definitely put a lot of money into the design here. They hired a really good designer to do it. These look great. I'm sure they function excellent. I'm not sure if that bezel is going to be grippy enough, but it really does look good. It is very expensive for a Miyota 9039. I can't say that enough. But tell me what you guys think in the comments below. I want to hear from you guys. I think it is expensive, but tell me what you think. Please also don't forget to follow me on Instagram. My Instagram is watchchrisblog. I have some links in the description. Those links are to Amazon. If you click those links and buy anything, it helps support the channel. It doesn't cost you anything extra. However, I very much appreciate it. Please also don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit that bell icon. It's super helpful for the channel and I very much appreciate it. Anyway, thank you for logging on. I'll catch you guys in the next video.